Reggae Just Extra with Ross Dennis. On September 11th, 1987, Carlton Santa Davis was at Peter Tosh's house, lying on his stomach, with a gun pointed at his head. The first to be fired upon was Marlene Brown, Peter's wife and Tosh's manager and accountant. Winston Doc Brown was shot and killed on the spot, with Peter being shot several times. He died hours later at the University of the West Indies Hospital. Radio personality Jeff Free Eye Dixon also received shots to the head resulting in his death days later. Also wounded were Free Eye's wife, Joy, Peter's drummer, Carlton Santa Davis, and another friend named Michael Robinson. The man who was responsible for all these was no other than Dennis Lepo Lobin and two others. My name is Ras Dennis, and you are welcome back to another crucial video by Reggae Just Extra. You are now watching Reggae Just Extra's Carlton Santa Davis Edition. This episode is about Carlton Davis, better known as Santa, a former Peter Tosh's drummer, who was accused by Marlene Brown during an interview with Muda Baruka for not willing to help wounded Peter Tosh to the hospital for treatment, but rather went alone. So anyway, Mr. Timberson said, no, Marlene, call myself, you've got to look out for Peter right now. Go to your neighbor, first thing come to me, say, beg his neighbor, say, beg anybody apart. We run, go to door and I bleed furious, Mr. Tempers. When the man saw me, I bleed, the man speed up. Mr. said, Lord, when we look now, Mr. Santa Dave is cheap. So Mr. said, we just, come let me let us remember, Mr. Santa, and I also know, we run, go to Santa, Mr. Santa, Santa, Peter alive. Help me now, we can't see if Peter, you know, don't drive off and leave us. Help me try Peter go to hospital now. Santa say, you know, say, me not help you, come get shot, you know. A straight uh, hospital, me have a man, me not help you, come get shot. That is the exact word that Santa used to us. Kindly stay tuned and do remember to subscribe to this channel, like, share, and most importantly hit the notification bell to be the first to watch our next video. Quick look at Carlton Santa Davis's profile. He was born on November 21st, 1953, and grew up in Kingston 13 in Jamaica. Carlton Santa Davis is recognized as one of the top reggae recording and live drummers in the world. He has toured with names like Jimmy Cliff, Black Uhuru, Burning Spear, Bob Marley, Peter Tosh, Bunny Whaler, Big Youth, Dennis Brown, Johnny Clark, Ken Booth, Gregory Isaacs, the Mighty Diamonds, Uroy, Iroy, John Holt, Horace Andy, Max Romeo, The Wailing Souls, Aini Kemozi, Michael Rose, and Ziggy Marley, and to mention a few. As a studio drummer, his work has helped to shape what is still today the standard in reggae music. His recording credits include some of the most classic reggae tunes of all time. Songs like Africa Unite, Coming In From The Cold, and Chant Down Babylon from the internationally acclaimed album Survival and Uprising by reggae superstar Bob Marley. His credits also include most songs on the album Liberation by Bunny Whaler, Marcus Garvey and Tradition by Burning Spear, Love is Overdue and All I Have is Love by Gregory Isaacs, Money in My Pocket and Westbound Train by Dennis Brown. The Grammy-nominated album All Over the World by Wailing Souls on Sony Music, the classic Stalic 17 instrumental, used by many Jamaican DJ slash rappers, the entire album's Rastafari and Disarmament by Ras Michael, the Grammy-nominated album Make Place for the Youth, by Andrew Tosh and many more songs with well-known artists like Abyssinians, Barrington Livy, Delroy Wilson, Michigan and Smiley, Jacob Miller, Tony Tuff, King Yellowman, Sugar Minot, Joe Higgs, Muda Baruka, and Big Mountain, to name a few. In 1976, he was hired to tour with Jimmy Cliff. On the success of the movie and soundtrack, The Harder They Come, Cliff was an international smash. That same year, Peter Tosh released his first solo album, Legalize It. That was when Bunny Whalers told Peter about him, when you put your band together, this is the drummer you need. They recorded Kitchy Shubby and it was terrific, but he'd already made a commitment to Jimmy Cliff. 
On the album, he was credited simply by his nickname, Santa. Five years later, a BMW pulls up next to him on a street in Halfway Tree. It's Peter, are you ready to saddle up now? He was asking Santa to go on tour. This time, Santa was available. For the next six years, the last six of Peter Tosh's life, there were very few days when he didn't see Peter or speak to him. He toured the world with Peter Tosh at the peak of his international fame. You are now watching Reggae Gist Extras Carlton Santa Davis Edition. According to Carlton Santa Davis, Peter Tosh was very accommodating, generous, and kind. He was quiet, speaking only when he had something to say, and he had a great sense of humor. He was humble and always gave what he could. A voracious reader, Peter prided himself on being aware of the world he lived in. He was also the consummate professional. He was never late and always performed at his highest level. As musicians, he treated his bandmates like pros and trusted them to the fullest extent, even letting them write each night's set list, usually nodding a simple yaman man in approval. He made them feel like he was working for them, not them working for him. Dennis Lobin was known around Kingston as Lepo. He had done time in prison and was one of the many that came around Peter when he became successful. Peter was a caring person who would always ready to help, but some, like Lepo, made a habit out of asking. Marlene Brown, who married Peter Tosh in Nigeria, said she didn't trust or like Lepo and even warned Peter to be very careful of him, probably since Lepo was an ex-convict, and his court document has it that he was sentenced to prison for killing someone. He always come and want Peter to support him because he walked to every musician he had looking for support. Just like Peter Tosh always, which I don't like him, so I always encourage Peter not to allow this boy to come to Marlene Brown was also allegedly said to have formed the habit of controlling, hammering a wedge between Peter and many of his closest friends. According to Santa, Peter Tosh was said to have raised his samurai sword at Bunny at Marlene's bidding, driving Bunny away, and what he believed started the downfall of Peter Tosh's life was a comment Marlene made to Lepo. She called Lepo with a derogatory Jamaican slang term for homosexual. Lepo then accused Peter of having no control over his wife, and he began telling people around Kingston he was going to get Tosh. The ill-fated night came on Friday, September 11th, 1987. Peter had returned from a trip to the States and Carlton Santa Davis was at his house early, just after sunset, and others were at the house. Wilton Doc Brown and Michael Robinson were there and Peter and Marlene. Jeffrey I. Dixon, a local disc jockey, and his wife arrived later. Now, as we got up to the top of the stairs, we saw everybody on the floor, and there are these two guys walking. This is a holdup. And it's you why this is happening, one said in the direction of Marlene. Lepo was asking Peter where the safe was, but Peter kept insisting there was no money in the house. Monday, I go to the bank, he said, but the gang did not believe him. You know, it said to Peter that it's tonight we're in there, there. You could have seen them money like them really high up, boost up on some drugs or something, you know? If you looked up and said, put your head down with... They stayed at his residence for several hours and tortured Tosh in an attempt to extort money from him. The gunman became more and more frustrated, especially the chief thug, Dennis Lepo Lobin, a man whom Tosh had previously tried to help find work after a long jail sentence. Lepo took the $300 Santa hat in his wallet and his watch. They didn't wear masks, and Lepo, knowing he'd be recognized, said, no partiality. Like, even though we'd seen each on the street in the days prior, that didn't matter now. When they were done taking their money, one of them said to Peter Tosh, you're dying tonight. For a moment, there was silence. And then Lobin and his fellow gunmen began opening fire in a reckless manner. After a few seconds, it was finally quiet. Noise was heard outside, like a car pulling away and Santa stood up. He went first to the bathroom, worried the gunman still may be in the house. He waited a minute, 
but he felt odd and told Marlene that he was having trouble breathing and was losing all feeling in the left side of his body. He made his way to his Jeep. From there, he drove, with only his right side functioning, 10 minutes to the entrance of the University of the West Indies Hospital and then he collapsed into the arms of the alerted porters. He was taken to the emergency room. Minutes later, Free Eye and Peter were wheeled in. On one side of him was Free Eye fighting for his life. He's grunting and moaning, struggling to survive. On the other side of him was Peter. The doctors were over him, working furiously. Then, a doctor said, I'm afraid Mr. Tosh has left us. Marlene Brown accused Carlton Santa Davis for refusing to take wounded Peter Tosh along with him in his Jeep. In his defense, Carlton Santa Davis said he didn't have such conversation with her. Thanks for watching and do remember to subscribe, give it a like and post a positive comment in the comment section below and I'll see you again very soon for another video. Many thanks for watching Reggae Gist Extra with Ras Dennis.